Good morning and welcome to Ralph's house. Yeah, you know, just before we get started this week, I was just going to talk a little bit about security, uh, which is an issue I'm sure we all think about at one time or another, especially when we're sleeping safely in our bed. Um, well, as all well as all the usual things like a house alarm, which is an important thing to have. Um, I've also fitted some CCTV, or at least some of it, uh, starting with this one up on the outside, which gives me a good view of the front garden um, and the, the camera's quite good because I can operate it via my phone from absolutely anywhere as long as I've got an internet connection or via my computer I can swing it right around 360 degrees up down whatever and it's got very good night vision on it as well so I'm quite happy with that um, I've also got another one this one at the back which overlooks my pond uh, and really I've got that, well it does cover the back, but you know, um, because I've got fish and I have had at least one eaten by a big ginger tomcat, I don't blame the cat, but you know, fish are expensive. Um, so I've banked up the pond around the outside and make it a little bit harder for him to get in. And also I've got a camera trained on it as well. Uh, so I can keep an eye on that, I can also keep an eye on the water levels, because in this heat of course they have drop quite a bit at times. Um, I've also got one in porch which operates as a, as a well it operates as a doorbell but it also covers the porch uh, and I found that very good actually because I, if I've been out and I've had a parcel delivered I know um, and I can also talk to anybody that end again remotely if I want to. So that's it really on the cameras and uh, oh on to the next thing nice and sunny outside uh, but we haven't come out to look at the fish sadly no uh, tell me what we're coming to look at this is the fence <laughs> see right through to next door it is absolutely rotten as a pair the woodworms got into it so not great and uh, what makes this worse is um, they're not six foot panel, well they're six foot high, but they're not six foot that way. These are Arish rail fencing panels, not the sort of thing you can just put the posts in and put panels in and off you go. So you have to put the posts in, you have to screw the Arish rails to it, and then you have to nail on all this fencing. Anyway, I've ordered the posts, so that's a good start. I've also ordered all the Arish rails, I just need the brackets to uh, fix them to the posts. I'll probably get those locally though the place that did the post didn't seem to do them uh, so I can get a good start on that in the next couple of days and at least start getting the post in uh, lucky enough I don't know if I can show you this excuse my neighbours you see that it's got concrete godfathers so you literally bolt them through, through the cotton they're fine um, but the big posts, they're four inch. Mm. Some of this timber actually might be salvageable, cutting the end off, might come in for other jobs, but we'll see. Mm. So, luckily, I've got a good neighbour, James, who's going to help me do that. So, that'll be a bit of excitement. We'll film that. Now, this has nothing to do with Ralph's house, other than the fact that my son said, You'll show him how we shot, Dad. And actually, he's probably right. Um, you know, it's a bit of a welcome diversion from chisels and brick dust and paint, isn't it? Uh, and I learnt part of the way I shop uh, from my years working alongside a financial capability expert. He worked for Citizens Advice. And uh, he was really canny. He knew how to shop. He'd get holidays to America at ridiculously reduced prices on business class and things like that. He just knows how to work, work things, you know. And uh, I learnt a lot about shopping from him. Uh, and perhaps in the old days, I've been like a lot of people, you know, and I've got nothing against Tesco or 
Morrison's or any of these, you know, uh, I'd just perhaps go to one, get on my week shopping and not think any more about it. Uh, but it isn't when you get pointed out what you're actually doing and take it apart that you realise you're spending a lot more than you need to and generally about a third more. And these days, if you're paying rent or you're paying a mortgage, there's not much you can do about that. It's a fixed cost. You can't reduce it. You can reduce the cost of your energy consumption uh, buying a colder house and you can also cut your food bill down obviously you can't cut down the amount you need to sustain yourself but you can think more wisely about the way you shop uh, and that's one thing I do uh, and I'm sorry if you're vegetarian because you'll probably be offended by this if you are uh, but if you're not follow with me anyway uh, today I went to Bedworth Market and I got a bag of I don't know how many there is in there I don't know 10, perhaps 11, I don't know, let's say there's 10 pork steaks in there, so there's no bone in them at all, uh, I shall, I buy them like this, and then I'll decant them into smaller freezer bags, pop them in the freezer and we can use them as we want, I mean all this lot will last a month, a couple of months, because we don't eat meat every day, uh, but it's handy to have it, so anyway, got all that lot for 10 quid, um, also got some pepper steak. We have tried this before, and it's it's amazing. It's lots of different. It's not one big steak. There's there's various ones in there. That was a fiver. Pretty good deal. Um, and he let us have the black pudding for a quid. So and he did say yes, you can freeze it. So I should be slicing that today. So when I go to the butchers, I do have a bit of prep when I come back, but I don't go and buy all my meat in a supermarket. I just think. Every time I look in there, I just think how overpriced it is. I don't know why people buy them in there. Go to a butcher that you like. Uh, in this case, this is a wholesale butcher. Uh, on Bedworth Market. Big fella, big friendly fella. Looks like he was ex-military and an old PE teacher. He's got that kind of way about him, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> uh, but he recognises the fact that we go pretty regularly. And I've got to drive, I don't know, four or five miles to get to him. Uh, but well worth it. So that's how we shop in terms of that. Um, during the week, uh, on a Tuesday evening, I tend to go on a Tuesday evening because since COVID, um, it's often difficult to get in and out of supermarkets easily. They can get very busy. Uh, if you go on a Friday night, everybody's going to do the shopping. The weekend, forget it. Uh, Monday nights can be busy because people have gone to pick up stuff that they'd forgotten over the weekend. By Tuesday, it's pretty quiet. So if you go on a Tuesday evening, that's the best time to go shopping if you want to go shopping. Uh, so I'll go to Aldi because, again, compared to the big supermarkets, we'll save about a third off. And yes, they don't do the massive ranges that all the big supermarkets do. Uh, but by and large, you know, if we all if we buy tomatoes, we always buy the same ones. And uh, I don't think it's pretty true of Aldi. They, what they sell is very good quality for what it is. They, they only have about two possibly three different types of tomatoes and you just make your choice don't you i find their salad tomatoes all right 65p can't beat that well and i'll add bet it's cheaper than everywhere else so yeah on average i say it's about a third so that's another way of bringing your cost down so a bit of a diversion talking about meat but anyway there we go so that's 10 four inch by four inch or 100 mil if you want to be metric uh six foot post because they sit on concrete godfathers so they're not sat in the earth and 18 arras rails because you think 10 posts that means nine panels doesn't it between the posts two nine to 18 18 arras rails and i've got the brackets for those as well and the screws so i'm not sure when we're going to put that up i think we've got to cut a fair bit of foliage back first but all this is rotten full of woodworm so that's got to go so perhaps in the next rails house we'll be putting the fence up there we go all bagged up black pudding just a few in each one be all right my son my son likes black pudding so if he fancies some uh, and yes he knows what it is but he hasn't put him off <laughs> and uh, most of the steaks i managed to get one steak per bag uh, if they're quite big ones uh, but this place i've got i've got two in this one so that'll freeze fine in the freezer. Uh, again with these, I managed to get a couple in, but with this one I got three in, so that was alright. Well, just 
you know, if we fancy a bit more of a pork steak one night, we'll just cut one between us, do it like that. So, yeah, a bit of prep. Stop buying stuff that's already packaged up in small portions. You are paying the earth for it, you really are. Better to say, I'll set aside enough for a month or two months, buy yourself a big bag, divide it all up, put it in the freezer, a lot, lot cheaper. No, that's like I say, that's if you eat meat. And uh, it's the same for a lot of things. And don't get swayed by this, what is it, uh, buy two, get one free. Because unless you were going to buy that amount, you're not saving money, you're actually spending more money. Think about it. And uh, the usual adage, adage when you're going to buy something, three rules, pretty simple. Do I want it? Yes, you want it. Okay, fair enough. Do I need it? If the answer to that is no, stop there. You haven't spent any money, have you? Uh, but if the first two still apply, the third one is, can I buy it cheaper elsewhere? And the, the, there's an old saying that I don't agree with, that you get what you pay for. I don't think that's always true. I think a lot of the time we just get stitched up. And that's the honest answer on it. So there you go. All bagged up ready for, for the freezer. I've already put loads in, but these are the last three. And I just thought I'd show you what I've been doing. Russia has no allegiance to any country, nor to any ideal. It will embark upon any undertaking it may decide is in its own interest. And where Thrush succeeds, many, many people pay a terrible price. You know, I've heard of that, I think. I've read about that somewhere. Now, your group wants to stop this, this uh, thrush? Along with others. Let's say that Uncle is set up for the protection of many people all over the world. <gasps> and finally, uh, my stepfather, who up until very recently owned a caravan. And um, if you're familiar with caravans, they've got legs that you have to put down. You normally, normally use a handle to do it. But as you get older, it gets a little bit harder to do that. Uh, so he bought himself an impact driver uh, and then he put a socket on the end of this um, put it on the legs and it would wind it down did the job great for him uh, but he re recently sold the caravan and very kindly gave me this and you know, I'm actually thrilled with it I really am because although I've got a drill and uh, it's alright for most things um, it's not you know, it's, like it's got an ordinary cord on it, so I can plug that in. Um, I didn't opt for a cordless one because, I don't know, I'll be forever charging it up, and then there'll be long periods when I don't use it, and then when I come to use it, the battery doesn't work. You know what I mean? Uh, but this is great because I do own a Volkswagen, and if you own a Volkswagen, you spend a lot of time with spanners. <laughs> and uh, now and again, you'll hit a tight nut that you can't shift, particularly wheel nuts. This will shift it. Uh, but I also discovered... Uh, and I didn't know this about impact drivers. You can fit a chuck on it. You can get an adapter. I'm just waiting for it to come through. And basically it's an adapter that will fit on the end of that. Screw in the end of that. And then you've got a drill. Uh, that will come in very handy. The only thing is um, impact drivers and combi drills are not the same thing. Because apparently with a combi drill, which does have an impact feature, you know, like a hammer, uh, it's straight down the shaft. Whereas with these impact drivers, it's a sort of rotationally type of thing. But I, I have found, providing you don't put masses of pressure on it, that this will work just as well as a drill. And uh, and it's got more torque. And that's the great thing about it. So, yeah, I'm really thrilled with that. Um, yeah, so that's it from Ralph's house this week. Uh, I am still taking this stair lift off. I've got about half of it off now. Uh, but I'm going to leave that for the next installment of Ralph's house thanks for watching hope you found a few useful tips in there if only on the shopping <laughs> and uh, i'm just waiting for my neighbor to come back so we can discuss the final bits of the fence because we've got to get all the feather edge boards and i haven't found a source for that and timber is in short supply at the moment just about everywhere this is because of covid so it's potluck whether you get what you're looking for anyway leave a comment good or bad you know thumbs up or thumbs down thanks for watching and uh see you next week oh and don't forget to subscribe